Hey guys, it's Sasha. Elon Musk has just filed a lawsuit against OpenAI, Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, and Greg Brockman, the president of OpenAI. Elon Musk is suing under various forms of breach of contract because OpenAI has gone from being a non-profit organization developing open source artificial intelligence for the good of the world to a closed source private company making huge amounts of money for themselves and Microsoft, the world's biggest company. And this case is seriously bananas in so many ways. Now, first, at the very start, of the allegations, Elon Musk has decided to publish a little thesis on the risk of artificial general intelligence, which is an interesting read. There's a bit of history here how in 1996, IBM's Deep Blue AI program beat Garry Kasparov, the first time a computer program beat a human at chess, which was pretty important, except Deep Blue was not an AI program. It was built using a heuristic evaluation model with an expert system, which basically means it was manually programmed on how to evaluate chess positions using specific opinion from experts, and it was not using AI. It was just crunching 200 million positions a second and working out via a search algorithm if that position was good or not. Anyway, the lawsuit does say that these programs, while useful, were essentially one-trick ponies. Their intelligence was not general. Well, the truth is there is a difference between a neural network or some other thing that people might call some form of intelligence and what is essentially a big series of if-then statements. Anyway, there's two pages of AI history which seems to be very focused on chess, which is an odd way to measure artificial intelligence because according to some guy on Twitter, chess is too simple to be useful in real life. A mere eight by eight grid, no fog of war, no technology tree, no random map or spawn position, only two players, both sides exact same pieces. But then we we get into the crooks of the lawsuit, the founding agreement of OpenAI. It says that in 2015, Mr. Altman wrote that the development of superhuman machine intelligence is probably the greatest threat to the continued existence of humanity, which, you know, sounds kind of bad, right? So what do you do armed with this information, armed with the knowledge that this is the biggest threat to the existence of humanity? Later the same year, Mr. Altman approached Mr. Musk with a proposal that they join forces to form a non-profit AI lab that would try to catch up to Google in the race for AGI, but it would be the opposite of Google. And back in 2015, of course, Google's motto was don't be evil. So if open AI wanted to be the opposite of Google, Mm, so <laughs> apparently Elon Musk and Sam Altman thought that AI could wipe out humanity, the worst thing ever. So they thought, why don't we go and do exactly that? It's a bit like how in a horror movie, you know, the main character descends into the dark basement with the flickering lights and the screams. And you wonder, why would you do that? Well, so the movie can happen. Anyway, let's move on. Together with Mr. Brockman, the three, i.e. Elon Musk, Sam Altman, and Greg Brockman, agreed that this new lab, A, would be a non-profit developing AGI for the benefit of humanity, not for a profit company seeking to maximize shareholder profits, and B, would be open source balancing only countervailing safety considerations and would not keep its technology closed and secret for proprietary commercial reasons, aka the founding agreement. Reflecting the founding agreement, Mr. Musk named this new AI lab OpenAI, which would compete with and serve as a vital counterbalance to Google slash DeepMind in the race for AGI, but would do so to benefit humanity, not the shareholders of a private for-profit company, much less one of the largest technology companies in the world. So that last bit is obviously referencing Microsoft, who own a giant chunk of OpenAI. Well, Technically, they do not because, you know, the competition authorities in the United States and in Europe are pretty annoyed with them. And technically, you know, that would be kind of illegal because they're meant to be a nonprofit. So according to Microsoft, while details of our agreement remain confidential, it is important to note that Microsoft does not own any portion of OpenAI and is simply entitled to a share of profit distributions. Translation, our lawyers made it so that we technically don't own the company. Not at all, even though we literally get to decide on the board members, we have a board seat of our own and we get a big chunk of the profits. And yes, that pretty much is the legal definition of what a major shareholder is. You know, you vote on important company matters, you get to elect directors, you have your own director on the board and you get a slice of the profits. But don't worry, 
is not being a shareholder at all. It's completely legit. Anyway, there are a couple of pages that basically repeat the same point that OpenAI was meant to be open as a non-profit. But then in 2023, defendants Mr. Altman, Mr. Brockman and OpenAI set the founding agreement aflame. I am not sure if aflame is a technical legal term because I'm not a lawyer, but if it is, that's some pretty cool legalese language. In March 2023, OpenAI released its most powerful language model yet, GPT-4. GPT-4 is not not just capable of reasoning, it is better at reasoning than average humans. You can see that they're trying to make the case that GPT-4 is artificial general intelligence. It scored in the 90th percentile on the uniform bar exam for lawyers. It scored in the 99th percentile on the GRE verbal assessment. It even scored a 77% on the advanced sommelier examination. Now, a little interjection if I may. OpenAI is great at recalling information based on its training data because it's a large language model. And it is great at merging different bits of that information together. I think a lot of people would argue though that the term reasoning may have a slightly deeper function and meaning than just the ability of a large language model to recall data in a grammatically correct syntax. At this time, Mr. Altman caused OpenAI to radically depart from its original mission and historical practice of making its technology and knowledge available to the public. GPT-4's internal design was kept and remains a complete secret except to OpenAI and on information and belief Microsoft, who remember don't own OpenAI at all. There are no scientific publications describing the design of GPT-4. Instead, there are just press releases bragging about performance. On information and belief, the secrecy is primarily driven by commercial considerations, not safety. I actually think a big reason for the secrecy is also because OpenAI clearly broke the law in using other people's copyrighted information as their training material. There are multiple ongoing lawsuits from the the likes of the New York Times and others, and there have been countless examples of OpenAI printing data from sources where that is the only source that has that data who did not give them permission for their data to be used. They didn't get paid for it, they didn't get to stand any benefit whatsoever, and this is a pretty egregious and extremely blatant abuse of copyright because somebody put that information together. Somebody actually had to go and find the information in order for OpenAI to just consume it. But you know, OpenAI thought it would be great just to swallow it all for free, fuck the law, fuck the copyright, just steal everyone's information and repackage it because it's an LLM and sell it as a large language model. I know tech bros will disagree, be really mad because they don't understand or choose not to understand that just because the information is available on a website does not in fact make it public. It does not make it free for you to go and just reuse it, go and resell the same thing and make billions of dollars from it. No, that's not how the world works. According to the lawsuit, OpenAI is currently developing a model known as QSTAR that has an even stronger claim to AGI. Even stronger being a reference that GPT-4 is already AGI. On November 17th, 2023, OpenAI's board fired Mr. Oldman after losing confidence in his ability to continue leading OpenAI because he was not consistently candid with the board. In a series of stunning developments spanning the next several days, Mr. Altman and Mr. Brockman, in concert with Microsoft, exploited Microsoft's significant leverage over OpenAI and forced the resignation of a majority of OpenAI's board members, including chief scientist Ilya Sutskova. Mr. Altman was reinstated as CEO of OpenAI Inc. on November 21st. And yeah, that whole episode is incredibly fishy, it just doesn't add up. So you fire the CEO because he's apparently lying to the board, you know, that's what not being candid means. Then then you fire the rest of the board and you put the CEO back and then you put your own director in there as well. That just doesn't make any sense. On information and belief, the new board members were handpicked by Mr. Altman and blessed by Microsoft, who remember most definitely do not own OpenAI. The new board members lack substantial AI expertise and on information and belief are ill-equipped by design to make an independent determination of whether and when OpenAI has attained AGI. So the allegation is that they have already obtained AGI, 
but they've intentionally placed people in charge who don't know that AGI is already here because if it was, then Microsoft would not legally be able to license it. And this next paragraph is the really crucial part. These events of 2023 constitute flagrant breaches of the founding agreement, which defendants have essentially turned on its head. To this day, OpenAI's website continues to profess that its charter is to ensure that AGI benefits all of humanity. In reality, however, OpenAI has been transformed into a closed source de facto subsidiary of the largest technology company in the world, Microsoft. And on page 13, Elon Musk brings the receipts because the certificate of incorporation for OpenAI said that this corporation shall be a non-profit corporation organized exclusively for charitable and or educational purposes. Further down, the lawsuit says that Mr. Musk brought to bear his connections, stature and clout in the effort. He did a lot of the earlier recruitment personally. Elon contributed more than $44 million to OpenAI Inc. between 2016 and September 2020, and he paid the rent on the company's office in San Francisco. And in a tweet a year ago, Elon said that he contributed the first $100 million to OpenAI, so that must have been one really expensive office. In 2017, Mr. Brockman and others suggested transforming OpenAI from a non-profit to a for-profit corporation. After a series of communications over several weeks, Mr. Musk told Mr. Brockman, Dr. Sutskova, and Mr. Oldman, either go do something on your own or continue with OpenAI as a non-profit. I will no longer fund OpenAI until you have made a firm commitment to stay or I'm just being a fool who is essentially providing free funding to a startup. Discussions are over. And apparently the other two said okay. And then after Elon Musk stopped being actively involved with OpenAI, on March 11th, 2019, OpenAI announced that it would be creating a for-profit subsidiary, OpenAI LP. And the weird thing is that when this happened, Elon Musk didn't seem to mind too much. Following the announcement, Mr. Musk reached out to Mr. Altman asking him to be explicit that I have no financial interest in the for-profit arm of OpenAI. So he said he doesn't want to have explicit financial interest in it, but it doesn't say that he directly objected. However, Mr. Musk continued to support OpenAI Inc., the nonprofit donating an additional $3.48 million in 2019. And then OpenAI hired some snazzy lawyers who made a load of other companies up to make it as confusing as possible, but basically to migrate the nonprofit into a for-profit company without it being very obvious. And then after a load more details, there is the bit where Elon Musk says what he wants if he wins the case. Case. One, an order requiring the defendants continue to follow OpenAI's long-standing practice of making AI research and technology developed at OpenAI available to the public. And two, an order prohibiting defendants from utilizing OpenAI and its assets for the financial benefit of the individual defendants, Microsoft, or any other particular person or entity. And this all sounds very reasonable based on the evidence, based on everything we've heard. But then, then comes part B. For a judicial determination, the GPT-4 constitutes artificial general intelligence and is thereby outside the scope of OpenAI's license to Microsoft. So Elon Musk wants a judge in a court to determine if GPT-4 qualifies as artificial general intelligence. Not just some artificial intelligence, artificial general intelligence. And the truth is, I'm not sure if Elon Musk or OpenAI themselves know if GPT-4 is really artificial general intelligence. In fact, I think they both know the opposite to be true. In fact, I know that they both know the opposite to be true. I think I'll need a big bag of popcorn to watch this one unfold because that's basically the case. And I am no lawyer, but the first demand seems pretty reasonable because OpenAI screwed over the original founders, the original mission, the original people who contributed. Nvidia donated graphics cards to the project back in 2016. A lot of people gave OpenAI money and free resources to help the great cause. And now they just stole all of that, took all those resources, merged them into the, their own closed private company from which they stand to make billions of dollars. And that just doesn't sound right. But I suspect the problem with this case is going to be in that second bit, you know, where Elon Musk says that the court must determine if GPT-4 qualifies as general artificial intelligence. I asked GPT-4 the question, is GPT-4 an artificial general intelligence model? And it said, no, it's not. GPT-4, like its predecessors, is a highly advanced example of artificial narrow intelligence. So 
OpenAI and GPT-4 don't think so. And in December 2022, Elon Musk wrote on Twitter about ChatGPT, to be called AGI, it needs to invent amazing things or discover deeper physics. Many humans have done so. I'm not seeing that potential yet. And in July last year, in response to some guy with three first names, Elon Musk wrote, it's not AGI until it can solve at least one fundamental physics problem. As far as I know, I don't think GPT-4 has solved any fundamental physics problems. It might be a little hard to prove that Elon Musk genuinely believes GPT-4 to be AGI, given that he has publicly said the exact opposite multiple times. And in this case, will definitely be interesting to follow if you enjoy a bit of Shadon Froder.